Hello everyone, so I thought I would do a quick video of how I put together my direct attached SAS storage um, but uh, when I was planning to do it I actually forgot to take my camera with me. So instead I recorded a little bit of footage on my phone and I've kind of stitched it together and I'll just kind of quickly go through it that way just to kind of give you a sense of what the project is and how it's going together. The other reason why I'm going to revisit this later is that the computer that I was intending to plug it into decided to die. So the motherboards failed and uh, it's been a little bit flaky for a while, but I thought it would carry on a bit longer, not to be the case. So once I get that fixed and I uh, have the system back up and running, I'll go through the whole process and do a little video that puts it all together. But for now, I can just show you um, some, some footage I recorded with my phone and just how I put this uh, this direct attached storage system together. So you can see here that I used some external cases and uh, they have fans in them that uh, cool the hard drives and these cases have five different hard drives in them. I've got some Noctura fans because they're decent. And uh, a bit later on, you'll see a fan controller. So they're just three pin fans. So that's the case itself. You can kind of see that uh, five slot in there and little mounting brackets. It's not exactly hot swappable, but it's uh, pretty convenient still. And those things just go on the front. And then that mounts in three five and a quarter inch bays in your case. So it's a pretty neat solution. And these were about £25 off eBay, something like that. So they're by no means an expensive uh, solution to this. But that's fine, this is supposed to be a kind of budget project. So you can see it fits together quite nicely in the fans in the front there. So I use them in intake mode, so they suck air in across the drives and then the external fan in the back that expels the warm air. And there you can see one that's been populated with five hard drives. So the system I've got will have eight functioning hard drives and one spare, so there's the other case. And that's got four in and a gap down the middle just for airflow. And you can see these are SAS drives, um, which doesn't really present a problem, but you just have to kind of bear that in mind when you're looking at powering these things up. So this is the case I'm going to put it in. It's an old um, sort of an old rack mountable case, but it's also a tower convertible. I'll just take those rack mounts off and then uh, mount the drives in. And this is a pass-through card. So the mini SAS controllers will connect to that. And then you can see that the, the breakout cables go to the, the hard drives. And if I just pause this a second, actually, these are Molex to SATA converters. And they're actually quite important for this because if you put SAS, um, SATA power directly into SAS drives, they don't work because there's a problem with voltage going down one of the pins that it shouldn't do. If you convert a Molex, which is four pin, to a, SA, a SATA um, power, you don't get that problem. And then these, are, which are breakout, the mini SAS cable, so they go to that pass-through card, um, they just plugs, the, uh, the SATA power plugs into that um, bracket. It's a bit hard to see. You can kind of see one there, actually. And that's the solution to using SAS drives without a SAS backplane. You can just use a standard SATA uh, power connector conversion from Molex, which is what I've got here. Let's restart that. And just wind right back slightly. You can see it goes to the, that's the, Astro card, so that's an external on one side and then an internal mini SAS. And then each of those plugs runs four drives basically. So that's pretty uh, pretty straightforward solution really. And it just these things are available on eBay. The, I think that was about 10 quid or something or less, maybe, including shipping. Then you can see that also there's the Molex to SATA converter, uh, which are, uh, these convert five, which is quite convenient, but you can get those really cheaply as well, almost anywhere actually. And then you can see the back. So this is the back of the pass-through card, and this goes to an external SATA port, which will then run to uh, my workstation when it's fixed.
So this is it running. So the fans, this actually, yes, is the other thing I should notice, uh, mention. So this uses the standard power supply, but obviously you need to be able to switch that on and off. And the way I solved that problem was by getting a power connector. And then the power connector just uh, switches it on and off as a light when it's on. And then that powers all the drives up. No problem. And obviously all the fans as well. So you can see the fans running there. It's the power supply. The hard drives. And there's pretty good airflow through this. I did actually turn it down to the lower speed on the fan controller because there was more airflow than I felt I needed. And that's the front. You can see the front of the the system there. So that's it really, it's dead simple. What you didn't see actually is the, uh, the fan controller, which is just a simple, say, um, SATA connector that powers it. And then it has uh, ports for, I think, six fans. And it has an off, low or high setting. And I just put it on the low setting and that gives enough air through. So that's it for now. Um, I'll obviously show all of this together, hopefully working once I get my desktop back up and running. But until then, that's just a quick run through of uh, the system that I put together for this job. So I hope you find that interesting and I'll see you in another podcast.